The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the March 27th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of your future versus prisoners of your past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Just inside that subject heading, please put radio show question like Tim did here. So we've got one email on deck, and we've got one little uh, request inside the Tiger's Den. That's another way that you can go ahead and reach out to me. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow trade up 186 points. That's nearly eight tenths of a percent to the upside, while the NDX 100 is down three tenths of a percent or 21 points. Russell's up four tenths of a percent. That's down seven. You've got the S&P up about 10. That's nearly four tenths of a percent to the upside. So we've got one of those crazy markets, spot volatility index down 75 cents. That's three and a half percent. Yesterday's close was a, I believe, a minus 13 percent. We'll have to go check in on that. Remind me, Goldilocks back 10 bucks, trading at 13.44. Silver off 14 cents, trading out at 16.54. Leading the charge here to the upside is Mercado Libre, eight bucks and change. That's two percent. You've got uh, Equinix up uh, $6, Amazon up 7 uh, Canadian Pacific Railway up 5 bucks. a Biogen up nearly 5 Red Violet is violent. It's down 86% or 40 bucks. It's trading out at $6 out there. No idea what happened there, but that is a rose falling off the bud or a bud falling off the rose. Something along those lines. How about uh, Long Financial Corp? That's down $18 or 31%. Google up a little over 1%, 13 bucks. Tesla down 12. So we do have NVIDIA up nearly 3.5% or 8 bucks. So we certainly do have things to look for or look at. But let's go to those uh, first couple of questions before we go to the general market. The first question, in essence, was, is there anything to worry about with regard to the candle in the uh, GDX? So if we take a look at the GDX, and the answer there is no, but let's take a look at it. If we take a look at the GDX out here, uh, trading out at about the 2224 level, and the concern was whether or not there was a, a gap to the upside, a gap to the downside, creating some type of abandoned baby top. And the answer is there, there is not. We use the entire candle, so that means the upper and lower wicks out here, and that's where we would see some type of a gap. And there is no gap out here either to the upside or to the downside. So the pullback that we're seeing today just really um, a, in accordance with the directional move of gold. Gold's pulling back. We're seeing the uh, mining equities pull back, but really not so bad, not too uh, shabby out here. Here's what we do know about uh, the GDX. And really, it would be a similar pattern. We'll see how that similar pattern plays out inside of Facebook. If you come back and take a look at the trading session out here of February the 10th, February the 10th, you will see a giganto. 
I do mean a giganto hammer. Now, this hammer actually looks a little bit better than the hammer candle on Facebook yesterday. And I say that because uh, this would be the most bullish looking hammer, which means that during that session, you had traders push price all the way down into the uh, about the 2085 mark out there. And then by so the, the session opens up near where it closes. Then you have sellers come in and push it all the way down only to have those buyers push it all the way back up, much like a football game, much like a fumble, you know, where it's like you fumble the ball on the one-yard line, the other team picks it up, runs all the way down, they do some razzle-dazzle, fumble it before scoring, the other team picks it up and runs it back into the end zone. Now, a lot of energy dispersed in that 200-yard run out there, just like a lot of energy dispersed here. But it, what it does is it tells you at the end of the period that's the end of the trading session, who was in control. In this case here, a market moving down said, guess what? It was buyers who were going to begin taking control. Until you see a close below the low of a hammer candle, in the case, then you would use the expression, if you're long, you're wrong, then you know that you have support. We've seen the GDX push lower. For example, it did back here on March the 2nd just as the market was making a bottom. And then you also had the bulls rush in, a nice little bullish engulfing candle out here. So we can see where the uh, bulls are lined up. Not as easy uh, to distinguish where the bears are lined up, with the exception of you'd come to this gap to the downside. And that would be the trading session of February 3rd out here. But what we do know is we've got this sideways move. Kind of makes sense. You have a price oscillator below zero. That's the bottom panel of the uh, screen. Not the very bottom. We'll try to shrink this one here so it doesn't get in the way. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can Stevie do it? Apparently, I can't do it. Not because I didn't want to. But it's a reading as minus 0 0.208. Price is above Stevie's red line. Just as more, at least, counter trend rally is unfolding inside the GDX. Do we see any problems here? I do not see any problems as we speak right now at 1.12 in the afternoon. Let's go to our second question. This one is from Tim. And Tim is asking if we... Whoops. That was the wrong one. Uh... This from Tim says, I currently hold H-A-Y-N for a small profit. So let's go to our three time frame chart here, H-A-Y-N. Oh, I think I had Facebook up. We'll take a look at Facebook's hammer also just to, uh, you know, just as a point of reference for us to uh, look at. So he currently is uh, got H-A-Y-N, a small profit. Recently, it's broken down. OK, we see that. And wondering if he should hold it or add or close it out. Those would certainly be the three options out here. So let's take a look at H-A-Y-N. While I'm saying that, I'm going to try to type in the symbol on my other chart out here, uh, just so we've got another point of reference. And uh, I think I've just, I don't know what's happening with the system out here. Always, you know, life is always happening for you. And so I'm trying to update this chart to make sure it happens for the both of us out here. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this, Tim. First, with regard to the breakout, and, and you're certainly right about that, the three charts we're looking at, daily, weekly, and monthly charts, and the blue horizontal lines out here are TAS market profiles. The simplest explanation or meaning, what meaning, let's go with meaning, is that when price is above the top of a box, it's a bullish signal, clear out bullish signal. Now, that's not in trying to sell the top tick. When price is below the bottom of the box, then it's a bearish signal. That's not trying to buy the bottom tick out here. And that's irrespective of other patterns that you and I might trade. Seventh wave moves, price moving higher, less relative energy, A to B equals CD patterns. Gartley buy, sell, butterfly, so on and so forth out there. In this case here, daily, you're right, Tim, below the bottom of the box. Weekly, now the bottom of its box was tested on a move higher, which looks like yesterday, found resistance. That was at 39.48. I hear the music in my ears. That means we're going to have to finish this up as soon as we get right back. You don't buy into that nonsense, do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. Last March, the folks at Timers Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18th, 
2018 placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timers Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly, I've learned how to time the markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. And hey, before I forget to mention it, and obviously I can't because I'm going to mention it right now, uh, tomorrow I won't be able to do the 1 o'clock show. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to do, a, uh, I'm going to do the show at 8 o'clock in the morning. So it'll be replayed at 1 o'clock. So if you're really interested in, hey, what have the futures markets been doing overnight, you want to get a feel for that, then you can tune in early. Uh, you can catch the live show at 8 o'clock where that's going to be replayed during this hour here. It's the same deal. You can send me, you know, email me questions um, and all all that type of stuff. So that's going to be an early day uh, for uh, for many of you out there. And always fun, actually, to do the uh, early show because you get futures markets and we can go take a look at whatever patterns are present at that time to give us a clue as to what's really going on inside the market. So, you know, back to Tim and Haynes International out here. Uh, let's first make sure that each of us take the solemn oath that says it is never wrong to take profits, right? Hold up your right hand. Repeat after me. I my first name, <laughs> promise to never believe that it is ever, ever wrong to take profits. So your question, Tim, with regard to which of the three things should you do, add, sell, take profits, uh, sit tight, um, it's never wrong to take profits. And so you've got to do what instinctively is correct for you. What we can say is, based upon the daily profiles, <coughs> This thing would be headed lower. And you and I would immediately go to the weekly profiles only to find out that price is below the weekly profile. So we can't use the bottom or center or top of that box as a next price target. All we can really use is a retracement level, which may or may not work. That's a 0 0.618 retracement area. But I would say price could easily go down to the 3609 level. If we take a look at the monthly profile, what Haynes International is doing it's been trading in a nasty well, i won't call it nasty but it's been trading in a in a range out here for many months the range is between 3047 to 4245 and that is really where price could actually get back down to hasn't been able to bust them up maybe it's going to go try to bust them to the downside 
if you were going to ask me, is there any reason to sit on this for a day or two, I would just have to come up with that today is likely going to be the nine count, kind of like a bowling nine count, only this is the Tom DeMarc setup nine count. And today's bar actually did trade inside of bar number six and says that the descent lower may actually stall. Doesn't guarantee it will stall, but it says it may stall out here. Would, uh, and, and more likely what's happening is either stalling or move lower while the price oscillator, which is still above zero, gets down to the zero area. At the zero area and a test of Stevie's red line is where you and I could take a look at where you might add to a position out here. So, uh, Tim, I hope that that helps you out. And always, always, never a bad decision or a wrong decision to, uh, um, to uh, take profits. I think one of the coolest things that uh, Tom ever taught me, and that'd have to go down a long list, but one of the coolest things, especially when you get into something like that type of decision making, if it's something that you want to be in for a while, and even no matter what size it is, is just simply go ahead and get your principal back and leave the remaining number of shares just sitting out there and riding if you have that kind of belief in there. Uh, setting up a portfolio like that, that is a beautiful thing where all you have is, in essence, you know, your profits that are sitting there off to the side riding up or down. That is a peaceful night's sleep and we all want a peaceful night's sleep tarpon too wants to take a look at uh, stx out here so if we go take a look at it that's not what we were looking for let's go take a look at stx first let's go find out what that is that is seagate technologies now what i don't know tarpon too is uh are you just waiting to get in uh, or are you long or uh, you know it says for a long so i'm going to assume that you're not in it and uh, you'd like to get in this thing. So what do we know about this? First of all, trading with inside both its daily and its weekly profile. Resistance on the daily and weekly is 61.19. And at this stage here, we don't have any reason to believe that price will take out that level. So your reward risk right now is the reward would be, if you got it now, 59 bucks, 61.19, you're looking at about a $2 and change profit. The question becomes, where would you have to put your stop? And even though the bottom of the box is 57.80, I would say you would have to put the stop below 56.26 out here. And that's low from a couple of days ago. That, in essence, is the most recent swing point. There were 5 million shares there. Yesterday was an inside bar, 4 million, 4.7 million shares. So, um, you know, and I don't know what your time frame horizon is. Monthly chart looks pretty good. Monthly chart says, hey, this ought to get up and test the uh, swing point from December in 2014. But the low could be tested. That's 62.87. So if you're going to look for upside targets, 61.19, 62.87 would be the number. There's 51 million shares at that swing. Uh, now, the positive here inside of Seagate is you're pushing up into it, haven't reached it yet. I mean, in the low, which is 62.87, so far the high has been 61.19, but you're pushing into it with volume this month. So it does say or suggest on a longer-term basis that Seagate wants to at least get up into that level. And it actually passed a B point on a monthly basis, which was uh, April of uh, 2017. 123 million shares there were passed with 127, and it was wide price spread. So longer term, I get what you're looking at. You'd like to buy this, therefore, on some type of pullback. What would that pullback be? You know, it'd have to at least be a test of the uh, swing point out here from March the 23rd, I would say. Whether it's the high at 59.04, that doesn't make any sense. You're trading at 58.95 right now or the low of that level. That's the better approach, 56.26 out there. So, um, And then you've got to always be careful because if price were to continue moving forward, this could be an A to B equals CD to the downside on a daily basis. You can't rule that out. I don't want to be vague here, uh, and I'm not, but we have to take a look at both sides of this uh, potential um, stock, both the bullish and the bearish side. And the, if this were to be a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, gets you to 54, 57, a one to 1.272, about 53 bucks. You know, my eyes keep gravitating to the new weekly box that is out there. The ideal, and I do mean ideal buy, looks like between 49.14 and 52.15. That much I can say with conviction 
at least of, as of 125 in the afternoon. We had a request to go take a look at uh, Goldilocks, meaning GG, and that is uh, Gold Corp out here. Now, Gold Corp, that looks pretty good. Uh, just a uh, question is uh, just for a review of Gold Corp. So let's go look at it. Are you long? Mr. Peak, or are you just uh, looking to get in? You're in it to win it. Uh, tell me what it is you're doing out here. But I can share with you, I do like this setup on Gold Corp. So if you're in it, you're in it to win it. What do we mean by that? Well, uh, other than it being a catchy phrase and a catchy tune out here, on a uh, daily basis, you're above the uh, profiles. Weekly basis, you're above the profiles. This would suggest to you and me that what Gold Corp ought to do is go target. It's January 15th, the week of January 15th. That swing point. Anywhere between 1428 and 1555 out there. That looks like the uh, target. What Stevie really likes about, the, uh, about Gold Corp out here is this chart of Rooney. You got to have a nice chart of Rooney when you're long. And this chart of Rooney, the one that we like, is because back here on the trading day of, looks like the trading day was um, in essence right around March 23rd and March 22nd. And again, there's that music in my ear. That means it's uh, time to rest the larnix and then keep you baited to try to figure out why does Stevie like the Gold Corp chart so much? But I'll tell you as soon as we get back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com
Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 147. S&P is up uh, 5. And for those of you just joining us now, uh, tomorrow's show is going to be uh, taped at 8 o'clock in the morning. So it'll be live at 8, and then you'd be hearing the replay at uh, 1 o'clock. So uh, feel free. Love you to tune in and obviously uh, send your questions in as well. Uh, just as uh, Peak D here in the den was asking about Gold Corp. Now, the thing that I like most about Gold Corp out here, I was going to pull over a chart that was just a tad cleaner, just to make it a little bit easier, especially for those of you watching us on your mobile device out here, right? So try to get a little bit, oh, I take that back. It's uh, no less uh, cluttered. Uh, but here's what I like. When the price oscillator, the very bottom panel of the uh, screen out here, is approaching the zero area, what you really like to see is you really like to see a test of Stevie's red line. And in essence, that was what was taking place on the 21st and the uh, 22nd out here. And you always like to see a rising price oscillator above zero. Look, price could even pull back here to Stevie's red line. Uh, which would be 1347. There would be nothing wrong with it. You might feel a little pressure, but there would be nothing wrong with it. You always like to see a rising price oscillator above zero. That's what, in essence, we've had since March the 24th out there. Um, you know, you'd like to see it continue to close above the February 16th uh, high. Because if that uh, bearish reversal signal peak at on February 17th just means you're up around resistance, but you are up above that today. Same thing yesterday, same thing the day before. So three tests, as, uh, which is great, says a old level of potential resistance now is support. So support here, one level of support, is going to be the high of February the uh, 16th out there. So I do like the chart on uh, Gold Corp. That is ticker symbol GG. So somebody out there must be saying to themselves, what the, can you make? Can you make heads or tails out of what the market is doing? I think we can make heads or tails out of what the market is doing. And today we would do that just simply by taking a look at the equity futures contracts. So if we take a look at the ES mini out here, we'll take a look at it on multiple time frames. Let's take a look at it on, well, first we've got the 30-minute time frame out here. 30-minute time frame says we've got a brand new box. If the ES were to pull back, it ought to find support between the 2654, 2657 level. Bullish structured box, nothing here suggesting me that it won't get down to uh, test that area. Um, and so, I mean, and I say nothing, I mean really nothing that I can take a look at. What we know about the ES Mini on its 30-minute time frame is we know that it got to wave number seven. That's letter G on my system out here on a 30-minute basis. Oftentimes, that's where you see the market begin to pull back. Uh, this pulled back, and it did form. We talked about how that uh, TD setup nine count, when the bar is inside of bars five and six, I didn't mention five, but I mentioned six, but inside of bars five and six, it can oftentimes be a uh, an area where you see a stalling of price. Well, the top of this bar was close, but wasn't really to the bottom of bar number six. Nonetheless, you st and, and at nine, at that nine count, you can also see a change in trend out there. More so when that closes inside of bars five and six, but doesn't have to. There's no, you know, hard, steady rule out there. But when you do see it, it gives you uh, it gives you an additional read, right? You're a weather woman, a weather man out there, and you're just trying to read the charts. But in this case here, we can also see that the Stevie's red line, in essence, has acted as resistance out here. And until price closes above that, then more pullback could be in order. There is a little hammer out there that you see. So closing below the low of that would suggest an even further retracement. And likely, if that were to occur and unfold, that would then start heading back to that new box, as long as that profile remains. And again, that's 26.54. If I go take a look at, which means we're going to go take a look at, the 30-minute set of profiles out here, we're going to see, and this thing jostles back and forth, but the jostling right now says it is sellers in control. Sellers in control, meaning there are 96 issues, constituents, where price is trading above the top of the box, and 211 where price is trading below the bottom. And they had these breast statistics change rapidly on the 30-minute time frame because we're already up to 98 and 214, and it'll change. But the point is that it is the sellers that are in control of the ES Mini as we speak at 1.34 in the afternoon. Can I make heads or tails of this? Is that bad? Well, the interesting thing here is we can also look at the two-hour time frame chart, 120 minutes. We can see price trading within the range of 26.75, 26.58. Probably not a lot to be had on either side out there. Or, Well, I take that back. 26.58 might be a nice little buy area. 
But if that's going to happen, I'd wait for the 2654, 2657 level. If I look at the 240-minute time frame chart, you do have a brand new profile that formed about an hour ago. And this profile formed below price, which typically is bullish. So there's a bullish message inside the 240-minute time frame. Remember, each time frame is going to give you a different result. So you want to trade and stay within those time frames. Well, if we take a look at the 240-minute time frame, not only is the set of profiles where price is trading bullish, but so too is the market breadth. This had a crossover yesterday right around the 3.30, 12 o'clock, yeah, 12 o'clock time frame. And right now it still remains bullish market breadth, meaning more issues, more constituents have price traded above the top of their profile level versus the bottom, 172 to 69. Actually signs uh, PDB, pretty darn bullish to Steve-O out there on a four-hour time frame. And that, in essence, is what the market profiles are showing. So I kind of get what the markets are doing, so to speak. Originally, yesterday, it looked like we might see a price up into the 2701-ish area, but a brand new profile, as I say, formed, and it actually began forming at 10 o'clock this morning. This one will end at 2 p.m. and probably will remain in effect here for a while. If we look at the NQ, why is the NQ struggling? The NQ is struggling because it ran into resistance earlier this morning, late last night. Uh, and it did so when you take a look at its 240-minute profile. Its 240-minute profile had a bearish structured box. The top was 68.35. Remember yesterday, we said 68.35 to 68.49 was the range of where we would see the market bounce up to and then start to reveal some information to us. The reason we said 68.49 was because it was the top of its daily box. Now, it is struggling to get above that level. And we had a bearish structured box on the four-hour time frame chart. Here's where it gets a little bit interesting. Because if we look at the same four-hour time frame chart for the NQ, the NASDAQ 100, you're going to see it is still slightly bullish by slightly 25 above, 24 below. Hmm, something to think about. And if we take a look at the daily time frame, why did that act as resistance? Well, that is extremely bearish, and I use that word from a sense of uh, resistance-wise, okay, don't, you know, not like we're in a bear market. We're not in a bear market. Okay, we're in a consolidating market that's got a wide range out there. So let's get our terminology uh, correct here. But uh, what we can say is that sellers on a daily basis inside the NDX 100 are in control. Right? How do you say right, Steve-O? Well, you only have eight constituents where price is trading above the top of the daily and 45 below. So lots of pressure out there. Not a convincing, um, not a convincing set of market breadth data, you know, on what has been a nice bounce thus far. So how does that change out here? Which one's the laggard? Which one's the leading indicator? Leading indicator is going to be where price is trading in relationship to the top or the bottom of the box out here. So if we were to see the uh, NQ trade above 68.49, boy, that would be nice and bullish for the NQ. We get back from this break. We're going to go to one of our favorites, Garo in California, who's asking about Facebook. You know, that hammer candle that formed yesterday, let's go see what's going on on the Parabolic SAR program brought to us by Garo in Newport Beach, California. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's go out to uh, Newport Beach, California, speak with uh, Garo. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Good. Thank you, sir. How about you? Very well. Thanks so much for asking. And the stock that we're going to review with uh, Garo today is is Facebook. So uh, tell us what you're doing and how I can help you. <clears throat> um, I, I was just looking at the chart on the daily chart. Yes. Uh, uh, on, on the weekly chart, I didn't get that much of information. Uh, it has a lot of work to do, that Facebook has a lot of work to do on the weekly chart. Uh, but in the daily chart, uh, approximately uh, the bottom of that, uh, there was two possibilities. Uh, one was the gap on, uh, have you ever seen those two gaps that you done in uh, April and in July? Okay. Have you, you ever seen that? The, that Facebook does uh, gaps in April and July? Yes. I wasn't familiar with that. No, I, I do. Okay. I do, well, I do see that. On 21st of April. Yeah. If, if you there is a gap there, and uh, that gap was 144.17. Okay. And uh, uh, yesterday it hit uh, 149.02. That was the yes. low of the day. Yes. Uh, today it went up a little bit. And then now it's coming down again because it just hit the, uh, on, on, the, on, the we, on the daily chart, it hit that five-day simple moving average. It I couldn't see go any higher than that, and yes. it's slided down. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, the next gap is July the 11th. Uh, uh, it, uh, July 11th was, uh, was, uh, is, uh, was 155.42. Sure. So that is in that neighborhood. Now is 155.26. It is right in parallel to that gap of that July the 11th. Yes, I see that. Uh, yeah. What I'm thinking that is going to go down to that July the 21st at 144, that area, and it will stay there for probably a week to 10 days in that price. It will hover until they come with a good news or something like so, and yes. from there it will shoot up. What is your idea? 
So uh, if I keep it, so that's great. That's a great. That's great analysis out there, and uh, and thank you for for identifying those gaps and sharing that with us. If I were to teach you the uh, the the how to buy the D point of an A to B equals C D pattern, the lightning bolt pattern, then we would use this for instructional purposes. And I'm drawing in the A to B equals C D pattern. It looks like right now the A point on this was the high on the trading session of February 1st. The low of the trading session of February 9th, which was a hammer candle, is the B point. About a 6.8, it was really 67% retracement up into March 12th. And then we see that yesterday, the low was approximately a 1.272 expansion of that A to B leg. And it was a hammer candle. And that is where bulls were telling you, okay, there's a group of traders out there that believe that the bottom is in. That is really a hammer candle means the market is trying to find a bottom. Now, Carl, yeah. that actually kind of fits with uh, or can fit with your scenario where we're going to see price kind of meander sideways here. Because unless you close below the low of a hammer candle, then um, then then the bottom is in. Doesn't mean it goes right back up to the highs, but just says, okay, for now, a bottom is in. So going with your your hypothesis, this would fit the pattern that completed yesterday. If I were to teach you how to now, yesterday is a really, um, a really large hammer candle. Because in yeah. taking a trade like this in Facebook, your stop would have to be, in doing a reward to risk analysis, your stop would have to be below the low of the hammer candle. And I don't mean one penny. It's got to be below the low of that hammer candle out there. And... Uh, depending on what you're gauging as your reward out here right now, the reward's only 168.19 that I can see. You might have a different thing if we take a look at the uh, at the uh, parabolic SAR dots. But you know, if I, I were to approximately is there, yes, yes, is the it? numbers okay, are very very close by. Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. So we got two different systems. We're getting same numbers. That's nice for each of us out here. And if we were to teach you how to buy, how do you really buy a hammer candle? You'd like to buy it at least about halfway into the wick. And it looks like today, that's where that low is. That's where that gap is that you're pointing out. So it's really in here. Now, it's still a really wide-ranging uh, hammer, but it's $155 stock as well. So maybe it's, you know, it's and, and stops just simply impact your position size. You know, stops are supposed to be you figure out how much you're risking. You divide that risk, whether it's $100 or $1,000 by the stop you're using. That's how many shares you buy. That's the, that's the reverse math out here for how to really control risk if you're going to truly execute your stops and exit if the trade goes against you. The Japanese... Um, who developed these, obviously, Japanese candlesticks, when they were trading uh, rice, um, what they used to like to do with a hammer candle, and I have statistics, but I do know what they used to like to do with a hammer candle, is to buy a, a hammer candle where on days three through seven, price got into the center of that candle. So you're looking forward to, now you said 10 days, so that's kind of, you know, outside that range. But with, and, and so day one didn't qualify for their, for their methodology of buying a hammer candle. Um, so, but if this does move sideways, it says Facebook may in fact have a uh, bottom in place out there. Um, and that's what I see. What I like to also see when there's a bullish reversal signal, though, in, in if I were teaching you how to buy that D point, meaning the completion of the A to B equals CD pattern, is I like to see follow through on the next day, which would be much like the hammer candle, although the pattern wasn't there, much like the way that price responded on February 9th when Facebook formed a hammer candle, which was the next day price had moved a little bit higher. To me, that's follow through. Today is not follow through. So it's, it says that you'd have to really be cautious if, if somebody were to buy it today. I know you wouldn't be doing that because of your parabolic SAR system. And even on the short-term chart, on the 15-minute chart, you don't have any type of uh, buy that, uh, that I can see out here. Is that, is that how you're seeing that? So tell me what you're thinking now. Now that, we've, now that yes, both our yeah, numbers yeah, kind yeah, of tie out. You're absolutely right. As I said, uh, this has a lot of work to do. It, it's not going to be a quick fix. Uh, for uh, for uh, uh, for unless unless they come with a, a phony answer, I mean, uh, some, they get the rabbit out of the hat uh, sure. for some news, uh, the, the, and then they started to uh, pull them up. Pull them up. He, yeah, you're right. On a 15 minute, uh, the short today, I shorted at 159.03. If you look yeah. at 15 minutes chart, yeah, yeah. 
uh, yeah. on today, you will see that uh, when the candle hit that dot, yes. $159.03, that's yeah. where the short was on 15 minutes. No, I see that. I see that, and, you know, I see your Yeah, that's your where I shorted 21. it, and yeah. still I have it. Uh, and uh, now it's, it's in making the bottom curve, and I will get out of it. I, I can, that's how I do day trading on 10 and 15 minutes, you see? Sure, sure. Uh, the, yeah. So, so if, back to the weekly, because the weekly chart is pretty important, and, and you brought it up. Um, when, when, when equities, commodities, anything makes kind of a, a significant top, it usually occurs with price moving higher doing less relative energy. And that's what these black lines refer to. And on the very next trading week, which was February 9th, was when you got your signal that there was actually problems in Facebook. This was ahead of the news in last week. Do you mind sticking through the break here? We'll just finish it off, or if not, I can finish it off without you and tell you what I'm thinking. No, I'm done, sir. I've got okay. my answer. I Thanks so much for calling. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, girl. Thank Have you. a great day. Uh Would you like exposure to the foreign currency markets without any downside risk to your principal? Then consider the Petro Currencies Market Safe CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD leverages the performance of four equally weighted currencies from these top oil producing countries Brazil, Canada, Mexico, and Russia. This CD features a 200% leverage factor, which means that your potential upside payment will be double the currency's average performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And if the returns are negative, your principal's 100% protected. Returns are based on CD performance with no correlation to the price of oil, and there is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. The April 19th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA FSB member FDIC. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day, starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So if we take a look at uh, Facebook out here, you can see this is the weekly chart that we have up on the screen. And um, here it makes a perfect uh, a perfect top, the type of top that's uh, been present before the beginning of every bear market in the Dow for the last 130 years out here. And that is just simply price moving higher, doing less relative energy. But you have to be able to tie that into what the candlestick signals are telling us. Because just moving higher with less relative energy doesn't mean anything. It only means something when the actual bears show up. And that's what they did the week of February 9th out here. So 
February 9th, which was before all of this uh, uh, stuff had been released, it already gave you that message that, okay, timeout, giving you some type of toppy message. Now it has made an A to B equal CD. We see the hammer candle on the daily charts out here. But what we don't see is any kind of reversal signal necessarily on the weekly chart just yet. And as Gar was pointing out, well, maybe it has a lot of work to do. You know what? We'll know by Thursday. Short week, yes. But if this were to form a bullish reversal candle on a weekly basis out here, and I don't know that it will, and I'm not saying that it will, then that would be something to think about. And if not, eh, it could continue to head lower out there. And by heading lower, in the case of Facebook, you know, there's a stock that is parabolic, and it makes it uh, difficult to really find support out here. But if we had to, if we were stretched to, we would go take a look at its horizontal trading ranges. And I just simply would flip right over into the uh, monthly time frame chart that would say 135.81 would be a level to take a look at on the monthly time frame chart for Facebook, setting up a range of trading between 135.81 and 192.98. That's what the monthly charts tell us. The uh, weekly time frame chart, um, that's also suggesting maybe even 123.45. So we just need to see what the candle formation is come Thursday. Folks, don't forget uh, tomorrow, I won't be doing 1 to 2, but I will be doing 8 a.m., to 9 a.m. So if you want to see what the futures markets are doing for your commodities, for your equity futures and everything else, tune in at 8. Otherwise, catch the replay at 1 to 2, and I'll be back with you on uh, Terrific Thursday. I'll be with you tomorrow, too, but just at an earlier time slot. Have a great day. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear in mind, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5, Andy Heck to take it on home from 5 to 6. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters